uh, can you maybe walk us then through radiation? Um, you know, you gave that back background to Ramsar, which I think is very important. But how is it um, that we have come to fear radiation? Because there was a time in the 1930s and 40s, if I understand Marie Curie and, and all those great scientists, yeah. Pierre Curie, where they were embracing radiation, where they were excited about it, they were curious about it. And today we are scared of it. So what happened? Well, what happened was, what happened was in the, in the 1930s, up to the 1930s, people knew about nuclear energy, but they didn't know how to get it out under controlled uh, conditions. Uh, you could get it out from the decay of, of radioactivity, which happens in the earth and makes the inside of the earth hot and so on. But nobody knew how to actually harness it. And the person who found out how to harness it was a very clever uh, woman, an Austrian of Jewish extraction, who was working in Berlin in 1938. Now, if you're of Jewish extraction and you're in Berlin in 1938 and people know what you're doing uh, and it's to do with radiation, that puts a wholly different political uh, light on it without changing any of the science at all. This was Lisa Meitler, yeah? This was Lisa Meitler, and mm. she escaped to Sweden uh, and eventually uh, came to the UK, and uh, she is buried in a country churchyard in uh, in, uh, in Hampshire in the, U in the UK. So uh, and I knew her nephew uh, at Cambridge who taught me nuclear physics. Um, but... Uh, so there was a whole new env a political, social environment. And worse, in the United States, which lost their social nerve at the time of Joseph McCarthy, uh, who uh, accused so many in the, in the uh, American population, not just scientists, but uh, uh, um, politicians and actors and artists uh, and poets and people of being communist sympathizers. And uh, radiation and nuclear and giving away nuclear secrets became such heavy politics. And it was th at this time that these absurd... Uh, super precautionary levels of, of uh, attitudes to radiation were, were drawn up. Now, there was no science that went into any of that. Um, there is, of course, much more science today, but none of it actually uh, um, contradicts anything that was found in 1934 in Mary Curie's time as far as safety is concerned. What, what we what uh, the biologists have understood now is how how uh, some of the mechanisms that DNA repairs itself uh, and enzymes and, and, and cells get uh, condemned and replaced by new cells because, of course, cells are being replaced all the time uh, in order to make sure that they're clean and, indeed, uh, life as a whole. Uh, each of us, as an individual, gets replaced by uh, in our by our family um, uh, breeding and so on, and this is all part of nature's way of keeping life clean from the effects of radiation and and indeed the effects of oxygen, because oxygen is actually a rather more serious source of of. Uh, of uh, generating cancer than radiation is. This business about plutonium being the most dangerous uh, element in the periodic table is nonsense. Um, uh, oxygen is much more serious. Can you maybe explain that for the listeners? Why isn't plutonium so, so dangerous? Well, first of all, radioactivity 
uh, gives out radiation, but it doesn't it doesn't multiply. Now we know that uh, that uh, viruses are dangerous because uh, if you get one uh, um, uh, a, a virus um, a cell a virus cell, cell it it will multiply and make more and more and more. And the same is true of fire. Uh, we're all aware that fire catches. And you've only got to have one element of fire and you get what is really is a chain reaction. Uh, uh, and the whole thing can go up. That doesn't happen with radiation and radioactivity. It does inside a reactor, but that's due to neutrons. And that is very, very quickly and easily turned off. So that, that's not the problem. So the, the fear of radiation and radioactivity is fear of something against which we are already protected and is not catching. Now, the most pathetic thing is to read, as happened at the time of Fukushima and, and indeed uh in Japan, after uh, after the uh, the bombing, people think that radiation you can catch it. You have to avoid people who have been uh, radioact who have become radioactive. There's no need to do that. People uh, at, after Fukushima were turned away from hospitals because the hospital staff thought they were. Uh, that they were contaminated and therefore would spread uh, the effects of radiation. Well, nobody died anyway, but uh, it doesn't spread like that. So it's the fact that it doesn't spread is one of the reasons we can be far more confident about the safety of radiation than about the safety of fire, because fire is horrendously dangerous. But, but because it because it spreads. Well, one important point I think that you highlighted um, early on in the book, and again, it's this book, Radiation and Reason, I'm reading, uh, I read, um, is that the person or anything that's radioactive cannot become more radioactive in the process. You know, there's no chain reaction going off, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it did. In fact, it becomes less radioactive, uh, maybe very quickly or maybe very slowly. I mean, inside the earth are uh, the, and inside rocks and indeed all of us, are a few mu atoms uh, of, of uh, uranium and thorium and potassium-40, which have been, are still left over from when, uh, before the earth was formed, uh, uh, several thousand billion years ago. Um, but it, that, it's, getting weaker all the time. And these are just the ones that are still actually, still going. Um, but if, as happened after Fukushima, when the reactors were stopped, there's still 7% of the energy of the reactor goes on coming out in the form of, of uh, radioactivity and radiation. This is what had to be cooled, cooled down. But after a day, it's gone down, and after a year, it's gone down, and after a thousand million years, it would appear to be very little of it left at, at all. But So radioactive decay is actually a good thing, but it doesn't apply to arsenic or, or the kind of, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the chemical um, uh, poisons. In, in terms of Fukushima, because you, you were there after the accident, um, what what were the mistakes that the Japanese authorities made? Education. Primarily education. education. Okay. Because nobody knew. Nobody knew what they were dealing with. Uh, of course. Let me take a, a simple example of waste. One of the most serious waste form of waste is human biological waste. And it's so serious that we teach children at the age of a year and 18 months that they've got to look after it and be clean. Otherwise, they won't be allowed out into society to play with other children. 
And that is very serious education that parents uh, uh, go in for. And as a result, except in places where the sanitation level is not available uh, because there is not the infrastructure, uh, there is disease is not spread too much by human biological waste, but it can be, uh, and it's a very a seat of of, it, of infection of other uh, of, of other illnesses and so on. Excuse me, I lost my. You okay? Yes. Oh yeah. No, uh, in in uh, in Japan, at the time of the Fu of the Fukushima accident, everybody in Japan learns at school not only about fire, uh, as most of us did at our schools, uh, but they also learn about earthquakes and tsunamis, and they know that when it happens, what they've got to do uh, to uh, to make themselves safe. They don't. They don't wait to be told. They've had practices, they've been educated, and so on. And what happened at the time of the uh, of the tsunami disaster, there were 500,000 people in the area that were subsequently f flooded, and all but 20,000 of those uh, escaped to higher ground because everybody knew what to do. And that's education for you. And... 20,000 people deaths is a terrible effect on a, uh, a community. But they knew about it and they understood it and they survived it. But then along comes radiation. Nobody has told them anything about it. There are no plans. They do not understand it. They panic uh, and it's a small step from individual fear to collective panic. And uh, unfortunately, they're still panicking about it now. And Germany, uh, this last weekend, uh, has shown that the panic is still, uh, is still uh, going uh, full, full chat, um, uh, suppressing nuclear power, because they don't know about the world that they live in, and it frightens them. Well, they should have learned about that at school. So it's school, it's learning at school, and uh, people, not just the, the uh, authorities, but the children, everybody has got to know about the world that they live in. Wasn't that always the case? How do you explain, well, just, just to address the German question, um, Finland fortunately, opened a new reactor this week. So the yes. good is offset by the bad. I, I can <laughs> accept that. Um, and uh, Georgia, I think a few weeks ago in the United States, finally finished the highly delayed project. And that's fault of my profession, the civil engineers who were supposed to build it. They were delayed. They were doing, I don't know what they were doing. Um, but how do you explain it that Germany, this highly sophisticated society, I mean, when I think of German, German engineering, you think of quality. You think of safety, right? Oh, but, uh, but, but, just a moment, but just a moment. You're, you're confusing technology uh, mm -hmm. and engineering with natural science. Now, natural science is how the world works independently of us. What, uh, it, it's what, what would happen uh, if we weren't here. Then there's technology and uh, which is the development of things built on uh, natural science, and uh, that involves research and development. It involves investment, uh, speculation, but it better not step over the bounds of the way the world underneath it works. So uh, I think German education, which was in the... 19th century, uh, German chemistry was uh, uh, world leading. Uh, but I don't think that uh, natural, the natural, their understanding of natural science uh, has been good at all. 
Uh, and in fact, they have a policy of not learning about it. Now, it's true that Germany, of course, was on the front line of the nuclear of fear of nuclear in the uh, in the years of during the Cold War period. So was Japan uh, and uh, uh, and Korea and uh, other places. Um, but Germany seems to be particularly. They made a, a religion out of this fear. And that, of course, is un, it's unstable. It does not respond to uh, understanding and learning. Mm. Which is why we've got, to, we've got to look right over the heads of uh, the population of, of, of uh, my generation and the generation below. We've got to get right to the children and give them confidence uh, in Germany, everywhere and everywhere else too.